Yeah, they can they can start fights and things um, if there are females in heat. And so the most important thing is, I guess, if, if you have, especially um, what we call adolescent dogs, so think of it as the teenagers, if you've got teenage male dogs that you're putting together, um, that's probably when fights are going to start uh, if there's a female in heat. Uh, when you do get a fight, rule number one is do not try to break it up with it's your hands especially. It, it <laughs> is. I always tell everybody, um, use your boots. I mean, everybody's got feet. Use your feet. Don't be afraid to use them. Um, dogs, dogs are going to bite and they're going to bite. It, it doesn't matter if it's, uh, because you've got to remember when they're fighting, they're, they're in a frenzy and it's just teeth going to get anything they get a hold of. They're going to get a, that, get a hold of that other dog's legs or neck or ears or anything. Um, and, and sometimes you have to have kind of drastic measures to get them apart. So what I always say is if you have to, like if it's a real fight, a lot of times there's little squabbles that we don't worry about too much. And, and when I say squabbles, I mean two dogs that will start a fight, makes a lot of noise, and there might be some fur flying, but at the end of it, there's no blood, there's nothing. It just looks terrible, it sounds terrible, but nothing happens. Now, in the case when there's a female in heat, that's likely going to be a more escalated kind of a fight where there is going to probably be somebody who's got some punctures or something like that. Um, but but best thing to do in that case is what, one thing you can, I guess there's different options for here. Um, one is you can have something like a hockey stick out there to go in and try to poke them That's apart. We have um, shovels, lots of shovels around. Shovels will work too. A, shovel yeah, a broom, a shovel, a hockey well, stick. Well, yeah, like I mean we always have something. Yeah, like here. anything that's like at least six feet because oh, if even if you had something small and you went to poke them oh, apart, they're likely yeah. to just out of blind biting to just reach up and grab your hand or anything if you're close. So you don't want to be close. You, I mean, ideally, if you got like four feet between you and the fight, that's the best. Um, I've, I was at a dog race once where I, I witnessed a fight that I could, that I've never seen, like people going in with their boots trying to get them apart, nothing worked, nothing worked, and these two dogs were just going at it. And there was blood everywhere, and there was four guys in there, oh, wow. and uh, and they called me in, and I'm like, everybody has already kicked the snot out of them. They're still fighting, and uh, <laughs> so from where I was standing, until they're both males, and I took the one and picked him up right by the testicles, held him. Up <laughs> down, <laughs> that would work. And he finally let go. Mm. But that was, I mean, that's you don't ever want to do that in a real fight. But these were two dogs that were just gonna kill each other. I mean, there was no stopping them. So, um, and and for me to get in there. I obviously was not on the biting end because uh, I would not have gone in if, if that was the case. Um, but so these two are going at it like head to head. So when I went and grabbed this dog by his testicles, his head was over there, and uh, and I was pulling backwards like this. And if they were going to let go, they were still going to fight with each other, but at least not whip around and get me. So once we got them apart, everything was okay. But they they can get into that frame of mind where they're just going to bite anything, mm. and um, and that is our reaction is to just I mean first reaction is to get in there and try to separate them, and and that's okay. But yeah, never ever use your hands ever. Um, if if you want, you can even get a hockey stick and kind of put padding. Like you could put a pool noodle on the end of it and pad it if you're worried about you know hurting the dog with it. Uh, typically, if you're going to, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I always say, you know, don't be too nice when you're breaking up a dog fight like that because they're not being nice to each other and they're doing a lot of damage to each other if they're having a real fight. So the damage you're going to do with a hockey stick is like slim to none because you're going to get them apart. And, um, and you know, and you can kind of yell like you're going to kill somebody when you go in there too. And, uh, but, but that's the thing, like get them apart. But, but yeah, don't ever use your hands because... Um, dog bites are, uh, you know, I was just talking to somebody about this yesterday. Cat, cat bites are really, they're actually worse because they get infected. Cat bites do. Um, dog bites don't usually get infected, but they are typically more of a crush injury. So, um, if you get bit on your arm, the, the amount of damage they can do to the muscles is, you know, quite significant. So, um, if you get bit in your hands, uh, that's bad too because you can get bit anywhere on these little bones or your fingers and uh, they you know they dog bites hurt I mean um, I have not been bitten for years luckily but um, in in my first year of veterinary practice I got bit three times in the very first year 
um, and have never been bit since then, and that was like 30 years ago. So um, I think when you've been bit a few times, you start learning very quickly how to read body language and how to anticipate dog bites and know um, how to avoid getting bit in the first place. And, and also, you know, to just not put yourself in a situation where you are going to get bit. And, and, I, and you know, when we go out there after, I'll show you guys some uh, little tricks on, on how to do things with dogs from, um, let's say, one will be vaccinating a dog that uh, wants to eat everybody. I can show you guys a real easy way to do that. Um, so there's lots of different ways of dealing with dogs when, um, when you, you, you know, you don't trust them because when, when they come here, of course, half the time, you don't know the dog's name, you don't know their history, uh, you don't know if it's a dog that's been feral for a year, you don't know if it was someone's spoiled rotten house pet. Uh, you don't know if he's already bitten six people before you got him, and that's the the bad part about in a, in a shelter is that you just don't know the history on these dogs. And um, some of them will look like they are, um, you know, fairly approachable, and they're not going to do anything. And you always have to err on the side of caution because. Uh, even dogs that look quite harmless can bite you, so I always think it's better to be uh, proactive and just take the steps to not get bit. Um, because, you know, when you get bit, I mean, you know, I'm sure everybody needs their hands. So you don't realize how much you use your hands until one of them is injured and you're down to one. And then you're like, oh crap, don't want to have that ever happen again. So, um, yeah, so you always want to do everything to avoid dog bites always but don't be afraid to get a hockey stick or whatever and get in there and um, you don't have to club them in the head or anything but I would definitely try um, a hockey stick is nice because it's it's long enough but it's also got that curve on the end so what you can do is if two dogs are fighting you can take that hockey stick and get it like under you know pick whichever dog you want get it under their armpit and kind of lift them off and try to throw them away basically and a lot of times once you've got them split up um, and even then, <coughs> don't grab one right away. Yeah. So you got to realize, after you oh, split them up, yeah, good... if you split them up and you go, okay guys, you're you know yelling at them, and um, if you split them up and you quickly go to grab one, thinking that I'm going to grab them before they get into a fight again, you're likely to get bit mm -hmm. in that moment. Because that dog is still in that fighting zone, his brain is still there. So if you can get them apart, and you can kind of yell at them and give one maybe a little boot in the butt and say get out of here and if they kind of go their own way and go oh okay fight's over then you can approach the dog but when they're still in that excited phase like for a few seconds after the fight even at that point don't grab them unless you know and, and you can tell by their body language too because the dogs will if you get them apart and they're standing up all big and tall and they're going to go at it again, then get in there with the hockey stick again. But, but I, that is not the time to try grabbing them. So when you get them apart and they both kind of have cooled off for a few seconds, that's when you can, you know, if they have collars on. Um, do they wear collars here usually? Yeah. yeah. So if they have collars on, that's, that's easier. Um, grab them by the collar and take one out and, you know, put them away and deal with the other one later. But always give them, like, it, it might be two seconds, it might be five seconds. But wait till you see that dog kind of relax mm -hmm. before you grab it. Because otherwise he's liable to just, out of instinct, he's liable to just reach up and grab your hand just because he's still in that fighting, fighting mode.